She's an award-winning writer, a hunting guide, archery and rifle instructor, keynote speaker, and all-around outdoors woman who encourages you to get outside, hunt, fish, shoot, and savor all that life has to offer. And now, here's your host, Mia Anstein. Hello, hello, guys. I'm happy to be visiting with you again. Welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast. If this is your first time here, I'm happy that you stopped by. And if you've been here before and you've become a subscriber, then I thank you for doing that and for coming here again. It is quite a week here in Colorado. It should be winter time, but it definitely looks like springtime out there. Even the mud has already dried up. I think that's a good thing. Actually, no, it's not. We definitely need some moisture for our fields. But anyways, I digress. Today, I am going to be answering a listener's question about bow hunting. I hope that some of you are interested and that you might learn some things from the episode. If you are already a bow hunter, pay attention because there are some things that you might learn to help answer other people's questions. So I hope that you will stick around and I'll be right back after this word from WSI. This winter, stay warm from head to toe with WSI Sports' heater gear layers. Use Leah's affiliate code, LLCO10, at WSISports.com and get 10% off your order. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI Sports is bringing back pride in American-made clothing. That code, once again, LLCO10 for 10% off at WSISports.com. Okay, okay. WSI is great gear. It's something that I wear in the cold temperatures and in the hot summertime. So check those out at WSI.com. I do appreciate them being an affiliate of the Mac Outdoors podcast. Today, before we get started, I wanted to share what may be a fun fact, and for experienced hunters, you're going to probably want to skip forward just a couple seconds. It's only going to take a a little bit to answer this fun fact, but in an earlier episode, I had mentioned that some people may not know the difference between a buck, a bull, a cow, a calf, or a fawn, and definitely somebody called me out on that. So today, I want to talk about that. For those of you who want to learn more about wildlife, whether you're a hunter or not, a buck is a male deer. It is a antler deer and they grow their horns and those are bucks. Bucks can be of small or large caliber size and also bucks are not just deer but pronghorn and other animals. It's a male in the animals. However, when we're referring to moose or elk, those are called bulls. So a male elk or moose is a bull, just like with bovine species, a male is a bull. And then we have a cow, which is the female. So bulls are male, cows are female. And if we're talking about red deer, which are related to deer and elk and also moose. Red deer, their males are called stags and the females are called hinds. So if you didn't know those fun facts, then I hope they are helpful for you today. Also, we need to talk about the youngsters, calves or fawns. Those are youngsters and I hope that you found that interesting. Today's topic, we are going to be talking about bow hunting, as I mentioned, and I had hard times. I don't hunt because of hard times. However, growing up, my dad hunted because we didn't have a lot of money and he wanted to put food on the table. How many of you know someone like that, that hunts to put food on the table? While nowadays I do hunt and put food on the table, it's not because I can't afford to go to the grocery store. It's more because I enjoy the experience. So I hope that if you're hunting, you enjoy the experience because sometimes, quite honestly, we come up empty-handed when we're hunting. So I 
put out to the Colorado Bowhunters Association. We have a group on Facebook, and this is something that you might want to do if you're interested in hunting, is reach out to groups on social media sites. I'm also a member of a bow hunting group on MeWe and uh, the other social media outlets. There are groups where you can not just join bow hunting, but if you're interested in bow hunting, you might want to reach out to those groups because they have experience and they can definitely give you some good advice. On the Colorado Bow Hunters group, I received a lot of feedback and quite honestly, a lot of people said that if someone needs to hunt for food, there are way less expensive and more efficient means for putting food on the table than to use a bow. So right off, we need to remind you that bow hunting is a timely matter. There is a lot that goes into finding your bow and then developing your skills and finding the whole setup, which you will find in past episodes of the Mac Outdoors podcast. We'll talk about archery setup for low poundage bow shooters. And that may help you if you are somebody who's just starting. You may not have developed your strength and your archery muscles to get into a high poundage bow setup. And while we're looking at that, there are different types of bows. You may want to use a long bow, a recurve bow. You may want to go with a compound bow. There's a lot of decisions to be made there. Today, I'm only going to go over an overview, and then we will go into more in-depth details about this in future episodes. So keep that in mind. Today I'm simply answering the question about how to get into archery hunting to feed your large family in the event that somebody who is a breadwinner loses their job. For the love of the outdoors, open spaces, and mountains, shop www.mia.limited. one the Mac Outdoors Mountains Are Calling series of apparel is perfect for you or your loved ones. Support the channel and shop now. www.mia.limited. one. Any support that you can give via gear, apparel, or other items at the Mac Outdoors store is appreciated. Back to our topic here. If you're looking for a means to put food on the table. This is a serious discussion and I'm not being sarcastic here. The archery success rate is only about 10% of archery hunters that fill their tag. So something that you can do, and this is a recommendation that I received from my cohorts over at the Colorado Bowhunters Association group, they mentioned cruising for roadkill. And this is a serious thing. As I said, I'm not being sarcastic. There are people in my area that do this and they do this to put food on the table. They will see a roadkill as long as it is fresh and hasn't been sitting there in the heat or exposed for a length of time as long as wild animals haven't been picking at it. You can contact the DNR, which in Colorado, that would be Colorado Parks and Wildlife, and you can request a roadkill tag or a donation tag. And then you can take that meat and process it, and there we go again, learning curve. If you're not yet a hunter and don't know how to process meat, this is something that you're going to have to learn how to do. If you would like me to talk about that in a future episode, reach out to me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, as I said, uh, MeWe, Gab. I'm on a lot of social media outlets. Look for Mia Anstein or email me, contact at miaanstein.com, direct message or email, and let me know if you'd like to hear about some of these topics, and I will address them in a future episode. You can get roadkill and have wonderful meals so just that's really a way to get some meat and put it on the table something else that was mentioned is that you can probably buy an inexpensive rifle and have a better success on a hunting experience than doing archery so keep that in mind buying used archery equipment is a good thing to do if you need to you can maybe sell some extra items that you have on hand I do have personally I have an Etsy shop and I sell different 
clutter or knickknacks and I shouldn't call it clutter but things we all have things that we don't need and I used to just take them and dump them at the thrift store but now I sell them and I make some extra cash that way so that's an idea on a way to make money so that you can buy some used equipment so keep that in mind right now it is February and most hunting seasons are over and I'm not sure if you want to do big game hunting or small game hunting, but that's something else that we can talk about later. But big game hunting seasons, most of them are over. And what happens is people want to upgrade their equipment and get the latest and greatest items. So right now, if you look on maybe the Facebook sale page, if you look on eBay, different places, go to local pawn shops, you can find used gear because people are wanting to upgrade. So keep that in mind. You can find some good deals right now. You can also, if you're looking for good deals, as I said, reach out, leave a comment maybe in the hunting group in your region, and that way you can go and check stuff out. When you're looking at it, you need to make sure that it doesn't have any cracks on the limbs, make sure that the string isn't frayed. If you don't already know a lot about archery gear, then you probably should take somebody who has some experience with you to help you ensure that it's in good condition. For the individual that reached out, the industry that your family works in that is potentially going to be cut, and just for the rest of the listeners, we're talking about the mining industry, which actually a mine nearby has been closed down, and there are people that are out of work, and they also don't have a way to heat their homes. So this is an issue that really interested me when I saw it come up in the comment section over at MiaAnstein.com. But one thing, I used to guide hunters full-time on U.S. Forest Service land with the outfitting business. Now we do private land, but we actually had people from West Virginia that would come hunt. And one thing that I learned is that they're a tight-knit group and they support one another and they are really ready to jump and help others. So that's something that you can do is reach out to coworkers and colleagues and ask them for help. Some of them will even be able to donate meat to you so you wouldn't have to go out and learn to hunt. And I'm speaking to this as a, maybe you're a newbie and haven't started hunting already, but if you have, you can still reach out to others if you are injured. I have one friend who this year had to have shoulder surgery and we definitely wrote him a donation tag and gave him some of our meat that we got during our hunting seasons. So think about that. Think about those things. If you're wanting to hunt on your own, you also may be able to borrow a bow or if you're a rifle hunter, you may be able to borrow a rifle or you may be able to have somebody tag along and help you with this. One thing about bows is bows generally fit the user, whether it's a long bow or a recurve bow, those are a little more universal, but someone like me, I cannot pull as much weight as someone else or the limbs may be too long for somebody who is five foot two inches tall. So you can't always borrow someone else's bow, especially when you get to compound bows. Those are a little more specific and they fit you. As I mentioned, you can listen to past episodes on compound bow setup. I hope that a lot of this is answering your question. It also may have inspired more questions. If it did, please let me know. I'd be happy to delve deeper into all of this. As I mentioned, and as a lot of bow hunters mentioned, bow hunting is a little more challenging than rifle hunting. And it's part of why we love it so much is that challenge to get up close and personal with animals. The challenge of being on the ground and getting close to those animals even if you're in a tree stand or a blind, you you have that challenge of getting in their space and not know, having them not know that you're there. And it's, it's a joy. Something that I want you to know is if this is a means of putting food on the table, you may be unsuccessful. You need to take that consideration and keep it in mind that you may not be successful. You need to have alternatives and a backup plan if this is how you're going to feed your family. 
I hope that that is helpful. Uh, before I go, I want to talk to Colorado sportsmen and actually all U.S. sportsmen. I hope that you will be involved in your local wildlife and conservation endeavors. I want to encourage you to be involved in local and state and national wildlife and conservation endeavors. I want you to know that hunting is under attack right now more than it ever has been before. You need to attend your state's game commission meetings. They may be called something else in your state, but you need to attend those and you need to reach out and let your thoughts be heard. Uh, address those commissioners on a respectful level. I also want you to know that there are attacks being presented via legislation. And this isn't new that they're being presented through legislation, but I want you to be in touch with your representatives. And when you reach out to the commissioners or the representatives or your legislators, please do it with all respect behind. Nobody wants to be yelled at. Consider how you are if somebody yells at you, albeit through an email or some type of virtual means or a voicemail. Please always be respectful. If you need to find contact information, you can usually find that through your state's government page. So you can find your legislators there. When you want to find your commissioners for your state's game commission, you can find that on the state's wildlife or DNR's page. So just take some time to look that up. If you're from Colorado, you can, again, message me on social media or email me, contact at miaanstein.com. I can quickly shoot those over to you. If you had sent me a message and I missed it, then reach out again. I do always try to reply and respond to those contacts. So let me know if you have questions. I look forward to talking to you again next week. In the meantime, I hope you're always learning. I hope you're always sharing and I hope you're enjoying time in the outdoors. Have a great one. Bye guys. Hey, this is Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, host of the Armed Lutheran radio podcast, reminding you that the podcast you're listening to is a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all the great content at selfdefenseradio.net.